And with that, I will say good morning. Good to see one and all this morning as we gather for worship today. Beautiful day that the Lord has given us, especially as we make our way into this fall season. Uh, crisp, cool mornings in which we can arise and thankful that we can come and worship our Lord today. So I pray that you're doing well. Uh, God's gifts come to us again today through His Word, uh, through communion. Uh, today we hear of the course that God has us on through His Word, uh, that course that He blesses us with His gifts enables us to live as his people as well. So may the Lord bless us as we receive his gifts once again today. We are blessed to receive new members this morning. Uh, this morning, Daryl and Lisa Stevens are joining membership today. We pray God's blessings upon them and their blessing to us as they join God's family here at St. John's today. So uh, God's blessings to you as you become members of our church family today. And we'll have that in our worship service today right between the Nicene Creed and the prayer of the church. Our order of service this morning is setting one. We'll follow that once again out, out of our hymnals, beginning on page 151. With that, may the Lord bless us, and may we join our voices together this morning as we sing our opening hymn, number 496, Holy Spirit, Light Divine. Again, may the Lord bless us today. gather this day, we do gather in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We spend a moment in silence to reflect on God's word. And let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. No, Almighty God, in his mercy, he has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun His reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, by your grace, hear the prayers of your church. Grant that those things which we ask in faith, we may receive through your bountiful mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for this morning's readings.
The Old Testament reading comes from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and 2, verses 1 through 4. The oracle that Habakkuk saw, the prophet saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not hear? Or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity, and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law is paralyzed, and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth perverted. I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord answered me, Write a vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it, for still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end, it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him. But the righteous shall live by his faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson comes from 2 Timothy chapter 1, 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until the day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand as we sing the Alleluia in verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day, and turns to you seven times, saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him, when he has come in from the field, come at once and recline at table? 
Will he not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, and dress it pro- properly, and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. At this time, the children are invited forward for the children's message. Good morning. How's everyone today? Good. Thanks for coming up. Good to see you guys today. I brought some signs with today. I'd like to talk about signs. Signs are an important part of life. They give us information. They tell us, you know, maybe what we need to know. Tell us where to go. Maybe be careful of. So I brought a number of signs with me today. First of all, I'd like to talk about as we travel on roads, sometimes we see speed limit signs. So I brought a couple signs with me, speed limit signs, and I'd like you to tell me which one do you think is better? I know you guys can't drive, but as you're thinking about riding in your vehicle along the road, down the road, maybe down the street in town, in town you see speed limit signs. So what do you think as you're traveling along, which sign do you think works better? I have one that says speed limit 45, speed limit 45. And then I have another one that says, can you see it? It says speed limit 45. I see Teddy's getting closer here. It's hard to see. It's really small, isn't it? They both say speed limit 45. Which one do you think is better? Pointing at this one, I think, yeah, right. It's easy to see, right? And especially if you're driving down the road fast, it's easy to see something that's printed in larger print. So it's important to print it large so people can see it, so people know what the sign says, so they know in this instance what the speed limit is. In our first reading today from the book of Habakkuk, God's prophet Habakkuk is kind of saddened because a lot of people were not doing the right things. There were a lot of evil people hurting and harming other people, and he was very saddened because of that. And he was wondering what the Lord would do. He knew this was not right. He was waiting for for some words from God, kind of a sign from God to know what God would do to straighten things out. God doesn't want us to sin, right? He doesn't want us to do bad things, right? So again, there were people in the Old Testament reading, doing bad things, hurting others. Habakkuk the prophet is waiting for God's word to come. God speaks to Habakkuk in today's reading and he gives them a sign And let me say it this way, he gives him uh, some words to kind of put on a sign for God's people to hear. It's important for them to repent of their sin. That means to be sad for their sin, turn from their sin, turn to God, seek his forgiveness, believe and trust in him. The wording that God gives to Habakkuk in today's reading is the wording, the righteous shall live by his faith. This means that, God's, that the evil people there were to turn from their sin, feel sorry for their sin, turn to God, trust Him for forgiveness, and live by that faith. Trust in God, have faith that God loved them and forgave them. That was the message, that was the sign. I have those words on a couple pieces of paper here. Again, the words, the righteous shall live by faith. What do you think? Do you think this is a good sign to put that like, in that size? Can you, can you see what it says? Do you think this is better? The righteous shall live by faith. It's important that the people heard this. Again, to turn from their sin, have faith in God for His forgiveness, follow His ways to live as His people. So in a sense, Habakkuk had a sign, had God's words, and it was important for him to say it, proclaim it, kind of post it so so the people would hear, turn back to God, 
trust his love, forgiveness, salvation for them. It's an important word for us to hear too. That means that we're sinners, right? We're sinners, we do wrong things, we need to repent, we need to trust in Jesus too. So we kind of need to hear this as well. Yeah, we need to hear that it's important to have faith in God, trust his forgiveness, live in his ways. Last thing I'd like to talk about this morning, it's important for others to know that as well. You think it's important for others to know about Jesus? Yeah, really important for people, other people to know about Jesus because they're sinners too. And they need to be saved from their sin. They need to be forgiven. They need to be saved in Jesus. So it's important that we have maybe a couple last signs here today. What would you say? I'll ask you guys. What would you say if you had to put on a sign? What would you say the important message is? What's that? Okay. <laughs> Big letters, exactly. But what would the sign say about Jesus? What do you think? What's important for be- people to know about Jesus? Go ahead, David. He saved us. Very good. What else? What's important that er- everybody knows about Jesus? Go ahead. That, he, that he, he takes us to heaven, right? Yeah. Died on the cross, takes us to heaven. So I got a couple more other signs here. It's not the speed limit ones. That's not the right ones. Here, how about this one? Jesus died and rose for you. Is that a good sign? I think that's a good sign. Jesus died and rose for you. It's a big sign that everyone needs to hear and see. I have another one. Jesus is your Savior. Is that a good one? I think that's a good one too. Thanks for agreeing with me. Yeah, Jesus is our Savior. Important message for everybody. Us included, but everyone to see, to know. Because it's important. Because everyone needs to be forgiven, saved in Jesus who seeks to save and uh, forgive all. Right? So, again, as we think about our reading today from Habakkuk, important message that God gives his prophet there, important message he gives us too, again, so everyone might know. All right, thanks guys. Let's close our time with a word of prayer. You guys hold your hands and pray with me. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us and everyone live by faith in you. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up this morning. Our service continues with our sermon hymn, number 587, I Know My Faith is Founded. Abide with me, O Savior, 
a firmer faith bestow. Then I shall bid defiance to every evil foe. In faith, Lord, let me serve you, though persecution, grief, and pain should seek to overwhelm me. Let me a steadfast trust retain at my departure. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. From 2008 until 2014, a game show called Wipeout aired on American TV. Recently, it was also rebooted in 2021 as well. The idea of the game show is simple. Each contestant goes through an obstacle course, all the while many things seek to knock them off course. The contestant has to climb over things and climb under things. The contestant has to jump and swing between diff different things on the course. And the contestant needs the ability and the agility to do everything all the while having little time to think and no time to rest. Because there are many things on this course that seek to knock them off. Things like blasts of air, rushing water, mud pits too. Things that swing at them, things even like punching gloves that punch at them as well. And so the audience finds themselves groaning Ooh, ah, oh, as they watch a poor, feeble soul being pummeled by the course. This is to say that if one watches the game show called Wipeout, it's easy to see people getting knocked off course. As we turn to our epistle reading today from 1 Timothy, we also see... Timothy, who is on an obstacle course. Well, this obstacle course is not found on a game show called Wipeout, but it's found on something called life. Life that would continually seek to knock Timothy off course. As Paul writes this letter to Timothy today, it's a letter from a pastor to a pastor. A letter from an experienced pastor to a younger pastor. An experienced pastor who was confident in the Lord to a pastor who wasn't as experienced in ministry, who was a bit more timid, who was a bit more afraid. And so in today's text, Paul encourages Timothy to stay the course, to fight the good fight of faith, to live out his faith and his calling to preach the word of God and teach the word of God as well. That being the gospel message of salvation found in Jesus Christ. And Paul encourages Timothy in this way in today's reading because there were a lot of things that would seek to knock Timothy off course. For example, people would mock him for his young age. People would disagree with what he preached and taught based on God's Word. People would disagree how he lived his life 
based on God's Word too. And suffering would come about because of all of this. Suffering would come about as Timothy lived out his faith and his calling. And suffering from one, for one's faith was not just a hypothetical possibility. No, the reality was found as close as the one who writes today's letter. Paul, as the author of today's letter, found himself imprisoned. Imprisoned for preaching and teaching and sharing the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And as tradition has it, Paul's martyrdom was close at hand. As we look at this letter that Paul writes to Timothy, it's normally noted as being written at A.D. 68. Tradition also has it that Paul was martyred for his faith in A.D. 68 too. In summary, Paul is writing to Timothy because he knew that fear and suffering would seek to knock Timothy off course. So as we look at today's text, we have to notice then where Paul points Timothy to. While encouraging Timothy to stay the course, Paul does not point Timothy to his own devices. Paul doesn't point Timothy to his strength. Paul doesn't point Timothy to his own willpower. No one said Paul points Timothy to his Lord. The one who had begun the good work of faith in Timothy, the one who would see Timothy through, the one, the Lord, who would enable Timothy to live out his faith. And so in today's text, we see how Paul is pointing Timothy to the Lord. He says in verse 12, He is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. In verse 13, Paul says to Timothy that he should live in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. In verse 14, Paul says, By the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. The good deposit being the message of salvation found in Jesus Christ. The good deposit that doesn't change. The good deposit that doesn't go bankrupt. In this way, Paul sets Timothy's eyes on Jesus and says, stay the course. As we apply today's text to our lives, we might want to say, well, I'm glad I'm not a pastor. I'm glad I don't have to preach God's Word. I'm glad I don't have to teach God's Word. I'm glad I'm not a pastor. But yet, while every Christian is not a pastor, the way every Christian lives does preach a message. While every Christian is not a pastor, the words that every Christian speaks teaches a message. Well, it might not occur behind something called a pulpit. It might not be done with a clergy shirt on. But yet, in a very real way, every Christian preaches by the way they live. In a very real way, every Christian teaches by what they say. And the importance of all of this is emphasized in today's Gospel reading where Jesus says, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. In other words, Jesus is saying here, stay the course as you live out your faith in me. And so this is to say that how we live out our faith matters. In other words, faith is not just about getting to heaven someday. If it were only that, the Lord would take us to heaven as soon as He brings us to faith. But faith is also about staying the course in this life. Faith is about living out our faith and our vocations and our daily positions where God has us. Faith is about living out God's ways wherever He places us. 
Faith is about living in God's ways because our neighbor needs us to. Ephesians 2.10 says it this way, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we might walk in them. This is to say that the Lord sets all Christians on a course to live. But of course, as we look around us, there are many things that seek to knock us off course. One of the big categories we might say is fear. Like, what are people going to say if I speak the truth of God's word and call a sin a sin? Like, will I have any friends if I don't do what they do and go with the flow? And corporately as a church, like, how do we live and operate in a culture that is becoming more and more anti-church? Another thing or another category that seeks to knock us off our course is suffering. Suffering that tempts us to question God's goodness and maybe even God's ways. And so we suffer when we experience the loss of a loved one. We suffer when our physical bodies and our physical abilities deteriorate. We suffer for our faith. We suffer as we carry our crosses. We suffer as we fight the good fight. And corporately, as a church, we suffer too. We suffer too when others hate us and lie about us when we stand on God's Word. And so as all of these things come at us, as all of these things come at us on our course, they knock us off. Well, sometimes we put up a better fight than others. And sometimes we are more deceived than at other times. But the end result is the same. The things in this life knock us off course, knock us off the course that God has put us on. So when we find ourselves being knocked off the course that God has has us on, when we find ourselves lying in the mud pit of our sin, it's important to turn to the one who stayed the course. It's important to turn to the one who was never knocked off course, and of course, That would be Jesus. You see, God the Father sent His Son Jesus and put Him on the course of obtaining our salvation. As God the Father sent His Son Jesus and put Him on the course of obtaining our salvation, there would be a lot of things, a lot of things, that would seek to knock Him off that course. For example, when Jesus was born, Herod sought to kill him. When Jesus started his ministry for 40 days, Satan in the wilderness tried to get Jesus to sin. When Jesus talked about his death, his resurrection, his suffering, his very own disciples said, Never, Lord, this shall not happen to you. And when Jesus was on the cross, the religious leaders said, let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. Time after time, things sought to knock Jesus off course. And that course was saving us from our sins. But not once. Not once was Jesus knocked off his course. Not once was he deterred from completing the work of our salvation. So with the thought of staying on course, obtaining our salvation, Luke 9.51 says, When the days draw near for him to be taken up, he set his face toward Jerusalem. Jesus says in Luke 9.22, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. 
and with all the work of his course in mind, which would finish with his resurrection from the dead on the third day. Jesus says in Luke 13, 32, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my course. This is to say that Jesus stayed the course of obtaining life and salvation all the way to the end. But this is also to say this morning that he did it for you. Jesus finished the course of salvation for you. He did it all for you. For all the times you get knocked off course, for the times that you wrongly fear things, for the times that suffering wrongly moves you, Jesus stayed the course and He did it all for you. And to help us think about a couple things that tend to keep us off course, in other words, when we are knocked off course, there's a couple things that always seek to keep us from getting back on course. A couple things that prevent us from getting back in the game, a couple things that prevent us from getting on course. And those things would be guilt and shame. Guilt being the remorse we feel over things that we've done and shame in being the remorse over who we are. Let me say that again. Guilt being the remorse we feel over things we've done and shame being the remorse over who we are. But because Jesus stayed the course, it is these very two things that he takes away from you. He changes both of these things in your life. For he says you are forgiven and therefore your guilt has been taken away. He looks at you and he says your shame has been taken upon me. I have taken it all upon myself. And therefore you have a new identity. The old is gone. The new has come. In me, Jesus says you are a child of God who is forgiven, redeemed, beloved, saved. In our Bible study this morning, we'll talk more about this idea of guilt and shame, but for now, suffice it to say, Jesus takes it all the way. He puts you back on course. Back on course of Christian living, back on course to stay the course. And the way that we do this is in our Lord. For His Word says to us today, He is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to us. His Word calls us to live in the faith and the love that we have in Him. His Word says by the Holy Spirit, who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. This does not mean that we will live perfectly, but it does mean that we will fight the good fight. We will stay the course. We will finish the race. Why? Because we do it in Jesus. We do it in His forgiveness. We do it in His strength through His Spirit whom He has given us. And as we think about finishing our course in Jesus, Philippians 1, 6 says, and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And so as you and I go through this thing called the obstacle of life, it's not only filled with groans, it's filled with praises too. Praises for forgiveness when we are knocked off course. Praises for strength that our Lord gives us. Praises that our feeble souls are being guarded until eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so God's Word today encourages us to stay the course as we live in Him. In Jesus' name, Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Our service for this morning continues as we speak the words of our Christian faith found in the wording in the Nicene Creed. This may be found on page 158. Please stand. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again, glory, to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time, the be seated. We do have our reception of new members at this time. So at this time, I invite the Stevens to come forward. As Daryl and Lisa stand before us today, again, we thank God for them as they join God's family here at St. John's in Cordova. Uh, they are joining by way of going through the adult instruction class. And so we wish God's blessings upon you and upon all of us as we receive God's gifts and uh, live in his ways to his glory. So with that, we do have the reception of new member right at this time. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? If so, answer, yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil in all his works and all his ways? If so, answer, yes, I renounce them. And do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, yes, I believe in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to the inspired word of God in the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? If so, answer, I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? If so, answer, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God? And in faith, word and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? Even If so, answer, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? If so, answer, I do, by the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? If so, answer, I do. And will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts that God has given you? If so, answer, I will, with the help of God. Upon this, your confession. This confession of your faith. I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The congregation is asked to please stand for a word of prayer. Let us pray. 
Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness, bringing these, your son and daughter, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess your saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit, they may continue steadfast in the one true faith, in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we said, welcome. This is yours. You're welcome. This is yours. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you both. Amen. You may return to your seats. The congregation is asked to remain standing as we continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, receive our thanks that you preserve your word in this world of uncertainty, confusion, and lies. Grant us to love your law and rejoice in your promises continually that we may live in your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for living a life in our place and staying the course for our salvation. When we go off course, show us our sins, lead us to repentance, and give us a clear conscience knowing that all our guilt and all our shame is gone. Send us an extra measure of your Spirit so that we are not ashamed of the gospel and that we endure suffering for the gospel as you will it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, Timothy learned of Christ from his faithful grandmother, Lois, and his faithful mother, Eunice. Bless all faithful parents and grandparents that they might pass on the faith to the next generation. Lord, in your mercy, Lord Jesus, you are Lord of the church and we are your people. Preserve us in your care that we might continue to follow the pattern of sound words found in your word. Give us all wisdom, discernment, and guidance to walk in your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, preserve us from paralyzed law and perverted justice. Strengthen those whom you have placed in authority to govern wisely that we might live free of strife and contention. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of all grace, remember those who suffer from violence, strife, illness, or affliction, especially Claire, Bev, Ruby, Kenny, Ryan, Janet, Sage, and all those affected by Hurricane Ian. Heal and deliver them according to your will. And when your answer seems slow, grant them patience and strength to bear their trials, knowing that you are near and you are working for their good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we pray for our families today of Carol Sternberg, Carson Stokebrand, Mark, and Rhonda Stokebrand, that they might continue to grow in their faith by turning away from sin, receiving your grace, and living according to your word. Give them what they need to glorify you in their respective vocations. Fill their lives with well-being and peace as they live in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for the callings you have given us. Grant that we might rejoice to labor in service to you until you gather us to your banquet table in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, known forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. At this time, we do collect our offering. Once again, asking all members and guests to find the record of fellowship forms found near the center aisle.
but thine own, whatever the gifts may be, all that we have Lord, from thee. Shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house. In the midst of you, O Jerusalem, the Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. You holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Our service this morning continues on page 164 as we sing, Thank the Lord. Please stand. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing the closing hymn number 685, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. Jesus, follow his example pure. Through a world that would deceive us and to sin our spirits lure. Onward in his footsteps treading, pilgrims here on home above. Full of faith and hope and love, let us do the Father's bidding, faithful Lord with me abide, I shall follow where you guide. Let us suffer here with Jesus, and with patience bear our cross. Joy will follow all our sadness. Where he is, there is no loss. Though today we sow no laughter, we shall reap celestial joy. All this comforts that annoy shall give way to mirth hereafter. Jesus, here I share your woe. Help me there your joy to know. Let us gladly die with Jesus, since by death he conquered death. He will free us from destruction, give to us immortal breath. Let us mortify all passion that would lead us into sin. And the grave that shuts us in Shall but prove the gate to heaven Jesus, here with you I die There to live with you on high Let us also live with Jesus he has risen from the dead. 
that to life we may awaken. Jesus, you are now our head. We are your own living members. Where you live, there we shall be. In your presence constantly living there with you forever jesus let me faithful be life eternal grant to me please be seated just a few announcements as our worship service concludes uh, today uh, first of all we're